my name is Central Youth and thank you for joining me back here online for church. If you don't know me, hey, I'm Gabriella and welcome back. This is a place where you belong, you matter, and we do life together. If you don't know, we have an exciting thing going on this coming June and it's our youth summer camp called Ignite. It's June 14th through June 16th, so make sure you tell your parents because registration is live and we want you guys to be there and spots are filling up quick. If you don't know, this is going to be the cheapest camp has ever been, which is absolutely insane. There's gonna be two different price packages that are gonna be offered this year. Our first one is gonna be $100 where you're gonna be able to experience all of the good fun. Tribal Wars, Color Captains, comps, message, groups, it's gonna be so much fun. And if you're interested in that other price package, it's gonna be $200 and you get to experience everything that I just said and then some, and that being our two off-campus excursions, one being Cowabunga Bay one day and the next day being Area 15 where we get to explore their new exhibit brought to us by Mail Wolf called Omega Mart. Guys, it is going to be absolutely insane. I am excited. I know the entire team here is so excited. So I hope to see you guys there. And if you are if, and if you are interested in registering, you can go ahead and head over to cyignite.com and you can go ahead and pick the payment plan you want and fill out all of the good information there. And it's okay if you have trouble signing up, you can go ahead and come into any of our youth services over the weekend and any of our team members here can help you out and get you registered for camp. It is going to be so much fun. And if you don't believe me, go ahead and check out this video. Oh my gosh, that was absolutely crazy. I am so excited and I hope that makes you guys so excited too. Like I said, check out cyignite.com if you're interested in registering and it's okay if you can't make it in person because for you guys, for online, for the ones who can't make it in person, we are offering an online experience. Just go ahead and keep your eyes out for all of that information to come out. But for this week, we're gonna go ahead and transition into an Ignite message, actually, back in 2019 from Brandon Coffing. So enjoy. Well, check it out. I wanna tell you about a time that I had a good time, probably too much of a good time, where I would even say I messed up a little bit on that one. And that was at a little place we call Disneyland. Yes! Happiest place. Happiest place on it. So much fun. And I bet you guys that have been thought it was a blast. But I'll tell you what, I was looking so much forward to the first time when I could go to Disneyland without my parents. I could be just my friends. And I'm telling you something, it's a totally different ballgame. We were hyped, we were amped. Because when you go with your parents, it's like someone's always holding you back. If you want to go to the ride, you're like, you want to go over there? I want to go over there. And they're like, no, no, it's time for sunscreen. Sunscreen, don't forget, Brandon. Mom, splash mountain, right? So this is the time when we get to go with our friends, and so we're pumped, we're having a ball. We're running from place to place, fast passing everything, riding all the rides. So much so, we killed Disneyland so fast, we get to lunch, and uh, I think we pretty much had already ridden everything, so we were getting a little bored, we're like, well, now what? Now what do we do? Well, not to worry, our friend kind of plan. Friend Laura said, listen guys, we might have done all of the fun rides, but why don't we go over to the uh, little kid rides in the storybook world? I'm like, no! We can guess. No! No Alice in Wonderland, no Pinocchio, no Small World. No, thank you. I need Space Mountain. I need Big Thunder Mountain Railroad, right? She's like, no, 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 no. You don't understand. I know a secret. 
you see, sometimes the uh, boys also get a little bored, so they have like a secret game in, this, in the little kid rides. It's called Scavenger Hunt Orange. And I'm like, what? What is, let's go now, what is this, what do we do? So like, it's easy, you get on the little rides, and you just keep your eyes out, and you're looking around, anything that's neon orange, you can just take. Like, <laughs> you, you just take it, she's like, oh yeah, for sure. You just take it, they replace them every night. I'm like, okay, I'm a little skeptical, but I get on the first ride, we're rolling along, and we see uh, the, the apple, the poison apple, and Snow White, like the witch is like, holding it out there, it's all like bright in the orange, and my friend Nick goes, whoop, takes it. So we got one of those. Then we go on to other rides, and we're seeing like a neon orange bow tie on the donkey in Pinocchio, and that's like little ways away from the ride, like you can't reach it, not a problem, just jump out of the ride, just get out, just run over there, jump over the wires, watch out for the lights, and then I just take it, it's cool, run all the way back, get back on the ride. And we got one of those too. And I'm like, dude, this is the best thing ever. I didn't know Disneyland could be so awesome. So we're doing this for like two hours. And we get to one ride where uh, it's uh, Alice in Wonderland and the, and the rabbit has neon orange glasses. And we've run it, we've done it like twice. And so we already have two pairs of the glasses, but we saw a third one, so we gotta go again, right? We're gonna get back on. We need that last one. But the problem is, it was right by the exit of the ride, like right next to it. You kind of reach it. It's like you don't really have time to get out of the ride and grab it, so we're not really sure what to do. But I'm like, guys, let's do it again. One more time, one more time. I think we can get it. So if the uh, that rabbit's right by the exit over here, glasses right here, exit, right? We're coming around on the ride, swinging around. I can see it from way over here. I jump out early, just run all the way down. I'm going to get a basket, a basket, a basket, a basket. I grab the glasses, but they're stuck this time. Like, everything else was like Velcro or loose, but this one was kind of stuck, like hot glue gun. So I take a minute, I don't want to like break it, so I'm careful. I pop them off and then I turn around, but my ride has gone out the exit. This is not good, okay. I have a moment of panic, I don't know what to do. But it's all right, my next friend's coming around the bend in their little car, there's an empty seat in the front. I'm gonna show you what this ride looks like. So these, this front seat was empty. Aww. Just so much happiness on this ride. Well, the front seat was empty, but the problem is the ride operators at the beginning, if no one's sitting in the ride, they take that little lap bar and they go all the way down. So it's kind of blocking the seat. So I, again, I'm panicking at this point. Like, my ride's already out. I don't know what to do. I'm holding these glasses. I don't know what to do. I just jump over the front of it. My legs are hanging over the caterpillar's head. And I'm like, kind of like coming outside the ride in front of all these people in line. And immediately, the ride operator sees me from across, horribly mad face, hits a big red button, ride stops, he picks up his phone, he's like yelling at someone on the phone, I'm pretty sure it's about me, I can't be, you know, positive. But we start hearing the, the little kind voice come over the PA that's like, ah, oh, attention everyone, we're so sorry about the pause here, we just got some technical difficulties, just hang on tight, this ride will get going in a jiffy. It's probably Jimmy Cricket or something. And, uh, well, hear that message played about ten times, and while that's happening, we're seeing people get kind of escorted out of the ride, one by one. Time goes by, everyone's coming off this ride, and I'm just sitting there, and it's just like this. It's like a sea of people in line, and we're just sitting here like, hey. <laughs> And I'm, you know, photo of the thing, too, so I think at this point I've tried to kind of work it in, but it's still kind of obvious. So the very last person off the ride is me, and I get taken over, and a security guy starts asking me questions. He's like, are you serious? What's going on? We had to evacuate this ride. We didn't know what's going on. And so I'm just honest. I'm like, listen, listen, my friend Laura, where's she at? She's not here. <laughs> uh, she told me it's okay. Uh, we were we, we heard that it's the game, Scavenger Orange, right? The guy just is looking at me like, what? <laughs> so, uh... Day at Disneyland ended with two Disneyland like police officers with the little badges, like one on either side of me, walking me from all the way in the back, right down Main Road, USA, straight out of Disneyland. I was kicked out. It was awesome. You guys gotta try it. It's the best day of Disney ever. Okay, please don't. If you try, no, don't try it. I don't want to get in trouble for it. But they did let me, I have been able to go back since. But guys, it was just that moment where I'm like, we were having fun, but I think 
we messed up on this one. And that takes us to our first point tonight. Grab your booklets and write this down. It's we all mess up. Can you say that with me? We all mess up. We all mess up. We all mess up. Good job. So we all mess up. I'm going to read this verse to you from the book of Romans. It says, For everyone has sinned. We all fall short of God's glorious standard. That's in Romans 3.23. So the beginning part is, everyone has sinned. Alright? It's not just me. Yeah, I went a little crazy at Disneyland, but you messed up too, and you've messed up too. We've all done something that's not right. We've lied, maybe we've cheated, maybe we've stolen something. We've all done something wrong. Maybe even this week at camp, you found it easy to get along with like one or two people in your group, but you're totally cool being mean to someone else, not letting them be a part, kind of pushing them to the side, making them feel not good inside, hurting their feelings. Like, guys, all that stuff is sin. When we say sin, we mean missing the mark, messing up, doing something that's not part of God's plan. And we've all been there. We've all fallen short of God's glorious standard. So this standard, this is a lot about what Bryce was talking about with you guys last night. God has gone ahead of us. Jesus went forward and he has prepared a place for us. It's a place of perfection. No more hurt, no more pain. It's perfect. So imagine this. If we're able to get to this place and still hurt each other, is the place perfect? No. So the standard is perfection because he's made a place that's perfect. So we've all fallen short of that standard, and we've all sinned. So that takes us to the next problem. If we've all sinned, we have this. I have a sin problem. Say that back to me. I have a sin problem. Very good. Now write that down. So also in the book of Romans, we have this verse. For the wages of sin is death. But the free gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. This is Romans 6, 23. So let's look at the first half of this verse here. For the wages of sin is death. That's some heavy language. All right, let's dive into it a little bit. Make sure we're still on the page, same page together. So wages, it's what you earn. It's like what you're paid. So let's say you were to have a job. The money you earn is your wages. Maybe some of you are like really like working for a living here. Maybe you're babysitting. Maybe you're pulling weeds for a neighbor, doing chores to earn a little bit of money. Anything you do like that, that money that you earn is your wages. So this verse, it's saying we know that we've all sinned in Romans 3, 23. In this verse, what we earned by doing that is death. Cool? Let's bring the worship team back up. No, I'm just kidding. Um, when we say death in that verse right there, we're not, we know that everybody dies at some point on the earth. But what the Bible is saying here is a spiritual death. When it says death, we're talking about separation from God. So if you have your Bible open there, if you're looking at Romans 6, 23, why don't you circle that word death? Or if you just have your booklet, write death is separation from God. And it's all making sense. It's all clicking together here. If God's made a perfect place for us, can't be without sin, and we have sinned, we can't go there, so therefore we're separated from God, and that's what we've earned, right? So it sounds like kind of a bummer. Think about it this way. When you sin, it's kind of like baggage. It's like you're accepting the weight. It's a big bag. <laughs> you're sucking the weight of that sin. So when you make those bad choices, it's like you're choosing to carry it around. So you're deciding it's okay to hurt someone. It's okay to lie a little bit this time. Right? You're just basically saying, like, it's cool. I'll just carry this around for a while. And uh, you know what? After time, it does kind of hurt. Like, it's hurting me right now, probably in a bad way. Maybe you're finding ways to kind of work with it, maybe a whole little bit different, maybe hide from people a little bit. No, I'm cool, I'm cool. Everything's good, I'm good. I do everything, right? Everything's cool. But at the end of the day, you have this with you. Like, you're just, you're choosing to carry it around. And that's not to say you're a bad person. We already talked about that. We're all in the same boat here. We've all made that choice to carry this luggage around with us. But one day, 
we're gonna have to answer for it. Like we gotta like deal with this luggage. It's kind of like the airport. I don't know how much you guys have dealt with an airport at this point in your life, but the airlines have set up standards. Like they have rules. You can't get on the plane with something this big. Check out this photo. This is my little boy Liam. He's uh he's cool. He's carry on size. Um, <laughs> As you can see, like Southwest, they have a specific standard. If it's wider than this, taller than this, you're not getting on the plane with that bag. Like that's the standard they've set. So the, I've seen people like try to get around it. Like they just act like they don't know. Maybe they don't know. I think they know. But they don't want to wait in line to check their bag. So they got something like this size. They go all the way up to the gate. It's like, hey, I'm A17. Here I am. Like going right on in. And they're like, whoa, 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 sir, sir, no. Can't get on this plane. Are you serious? What's that bag? You can't take that bag on this plane. You got to take care of that, or you're not getting on. It doesn't matter what you do. I mean, I don't suggest this. You could try just sprinting through. But uh, airport security is pretty intense. It's not like the Disneyland guys. Like you might have to spend some real conversations with people. But we got to like make a choice. Like maybe you feel like you can relate with that a little bit. Like you've seen the signs. You know the rules. You feel like when you're making a choice, it's probably not right. Maybe this week or maybe at another time you've heard about God. You've heard that there's this plan. You've heard about it, but you're just kind of choosing like right now. I'm, I'm not going to worry about that right now. I'm not going to deal with that right now. Well, we got to deal with this bag at some point. We all have it. It doesn't let us get on the plane. It's like that plane is ready to take us to that special place that God's prepared for us. Engines are ready. Captain's on the intercom. It's good to go. And we're just stuck at that runway, like not able to get on. But it's not just a sad story. In fact, you know, you might have heard that we call the Bible the good news, the gospel. And it's because we're not just stuck in that position. Like God knows that we can't get there on our own. He knows we have this problem, right? And he created us and he loves us. So we have to do something about it. So it brings us to our next point. Jesus paid the price. So in those verses, we've learned what we earn by making the choices. We've earned separation from God. We've earned debt. Like, it's got to be paid for. We made a choice. We racked up that bill. Someone's got to pay for it. And we, we can just choose to take it on ourselves and be separated from God and die in that way. Or we can choose to accept this good news. So Jesus came to earth, lived a perfect life without sin. Only person to ever live that's outside of that we all have sinned first, right? So he lived a perfect life so that he could take all of our luggage. He could take my ginormous metal bag here, plus all the stuff that you guys brought. It's like he piled on all of our luggage and took it and paid the price so that we didn't have to deal with that anymore. It's really awesome. It says in uh, Romans 5, check this out. Now, most people would not be willing to die for an upright person, like someone who's doing pretty good. Though someone might perhaps be willing to die for a person who is especially good. Like we've heard some of those stories, like a firefighter who goes in to rescue an innocent person from a building. Like there's, there's brave people who might, in the extremes of circumstances, lay down their life for someone else. But what's so amazing about Jesus is the last part of this passage here. But God showed his great love for us by sending Christ to die for us while we were still sinners. So we didn't earn it. We just sang that song. I didn't earn it. I don't deserve it. Still you give yourself away. That's what that's coming from, right? Like, God didn't die because we did enough of the right things that we deserve to be rescued. He rescued us because He loves us. He loves you not for, like, your track record. He loves you for your potential. So He doesn't love you for the good things or bad things you've done. He loves you for your potential, what He knows you can be, what He wants to be a part of doing with you. Brings us to our next point. There is a gift waiting for me. So that verse says there's the free gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. So that means there is a free gift 
that he's got for you. I need a volunteer just real quick. Right there. LA, yes. Come on up. Check this out. Check this out. Come on up. What's your name? Lillian. Lillian, how are you doing? I'm Brandon. Pleasure to meet you. All right, Lillian, check it out. I got this free gift for you here. Uh, we got some goldfish, we got some M&Ms, we got all kinds of candy, Pringles, Twizzlers, Oreos, hot tamales. My personal fave, Ew. Sour Patch. Hey, everyone. Sour Patch, are you? This is the king of candy! Anyway. There's also squishy donuts, because we heard you guys like squishy toys. Yeah! That's not true. You can blame Peyton Johnson. She pulled the stuff. So check it out. It's kind of like we, I got this free gift, I put it all together, you don't have to pay for it, right? You don't have to give me anything, you didn't have to do something to earn this, like literally, I got this for you, this is a gift, I prepared, I want you to have it, it's yours. So when does it actually become yours though? Like, right now, it's not that fun for you, I'm guessing, is it fun for you? Well, it's fun being on stage with you. Hey, well it's a pleasure to share that stage with you. But um, you can't enjoy this stuff yet because you don't have it. You actually have to take the choice to reach out and grab it for me. And now it's become your gift. So you can take that, you can keep that gift. Let's give it up big for me. So that's the concept. That concept there is a free gift. Like we put it together for her, it's really cool. My wife, Ariel, made it, so give her a big pass. Uh, she wants to know if she can have that basket back when you're done eating all the good True story. Yes. But anyway, so we know that God gave us this, the free gift of eternal life through His Son, Jesus, but it's sitting there. There's a gift waiting for you. You have to do something to take it, not to earn it, but to just accept the gift. So let's turn to the Bible. How do we do that? Uh, back to Romans, Romans 10 now. If you openly declare that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Romans 10, 9. So check it out. you got to declare openly that Jesus is Lord. We don't use the word Lord a lot nowadays other than talking about our Lord Jesus or Lord, Lord Savior. But Lord means like master, like the leader of your life. So when you're declaring that Jesus is Lord, you're saying, I'm going to turn away from making my own choices. Because I know when I leave myself in charge, I make the wrong choices and I mess up and I hurt people. I want to try this new way. I want to accept the free gift of God and call Jesus God, Lord, I'm going to dig into the Bible, find out what His purposes are for my life, and follow those. So when we say openly declare that Jesus is Lord, that's what in words, Jesus is Lord, but it's also in action. How you live, the choices you make, what you're going to seek to do, you got to like live it out and show it, right? So, sorry. When we talk about this life, eternal life, everlasting life, and Jesus' life, laying down my ways and choosing His ways, doing the church thing, reading the Bible, I want you to know this. This life that we're talking about and sharing with you guys this week is not a life of restrictions and rules that is designed to keep you from having the fun that other people have, right? It's not like God goes, no, 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 don't do that. Ha, 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 stay over here. He doesn't, want, he doesn't want you to prevent yourself from lying and cheating and doing those things so that you don't, can't have fun. He's trying to protect you from those things. Let's check this out. In John 10.10, 10, John 10.10, 10, the thief's purpose is to steal and kill and destroy. But my purpose is to give them a rich and satisfying life. That's Jesus talking in those words, and he's talking about his people. He said that he's come to give us a rich and satisfying life that's exceedingly, abundantly beyond what we can ever hope, imagine, or believe. So when he lays out, like, plan for you, the stuff that it tells us to in the Bible, like, love each other, 
don't be mean to each other, don't do this, don't do that. It's not like so that you can't be cool or can't fit in or can't be fun. He's trying to prevent you from the hurt, the emptiness, the loneliness, the despair. There's bad stuff connected to that. And God loves you so much that he died to give you a chance to live a life that has hope, that has meaning, that has less of that pain, that gives you the, the things that you need to be able to help someone else out, to encourage one another and live a life that's more full and bigger than you can imagine. Now, eternal life, it's a lot. It's a long time. And I think that a lot of times we don't focus on all of our life. So let's check this out. Like, let's say this rope here, this is like a timeline. This is school time. So if you're holding this timeline, this rope represents your whole life start to finish. And eternal life is pretty long. So as you can see, it's going around this whole room. Thank you, Bryce. Give it up for Bryce. <laughs> Bryce came here yesterday talking about heaven, talking about the heavens of promise. And he wanted you to do that. Night one, Jordan talked about what's up, baby? Give it up for this dude. The bookster. So Jordan told us our life is like a mist. Like, how do you make the most of it? We, none, nothing's guaranteed our life here on earth, right? And so too often, we just like narrow our focus where we're only thinking about what's right in front of us and what's just part of right now. Like, is that, are those people gonna like me? How do I fit in? If I get enough stuff and clothes, and money, and cool stuff, like maybe I can fit in. Well, check it out. Imagine that the stroke not only went this far, but it's even going out of this room so far, wrapped around the whole world. It's forever, right? And this red part at the end represents your life on Earth. And too often we find ourselves worried about, like, I'm going to fit in. I just want to do the right things and say the right things. And, like, I'll make fun of the right people if I have to as long as those people like me. And then I'll have, I'll have some more friends and then I'll fit in. And then I'll be happy. Or maybe if I can just get better, I'm going to practice every day. I'm going to be the best basketball player there is. I'm going to practice my crossovers. I'm going to get faster. I'm going to get stronger. When I get to high school, I'm going to make the team. I'm going to make varsity. And then I'm going to be a standout. And then check it out. I'm going to go to the pros. I'm going to play in the NBA, get all the money, and then I'll be happy. It's like this tiny sliver that you're thinking about in the relationship of life. Right? Maybe it's great. It's like, I just want to do well. Like, I'm going to prove, make my parents happy, get all A's. That way I can get a scholarship, go to that crazy school I want to go to, get that perfect job, and then I'll be happy. It's like this much of your life. And all of that stuff isn't going to fulfill you. And sometimes we got to make decisions and worry about how are we going to make a decision that affects the rest of us. Right? So... Are you going to take that moment? It's like that gift. You know, God set it out for you. He's prepared a place for you. He wants you to grab it. He wants to spend the rest of this white part of the road in eternity with you. But you have to accept Him. And we talked about declaring that Jesus is Lord. If you can't think of a time in your life where you made that official decision, like, I am going to make Jesus the Lord of my life. I'm going to say it with my mouth. I'm going to live in my life. If you haven't done that, that means there's still a gift just sitting there with your name on it. All right, in a few minutes, I'm going to help give you a chance to take that gift if you haven't before. But this part of camp is so important. We're talking about this life, how great it is, how fun it's going to be. All the leaders in this room, the band, the tech team, the UCYC staffers, everybody's here because they've experienced this in their life. And they're saying like, yo, I lived it before and it wasn't good enough and I found Jesus and it changed my life and I love it so much. I'm going to do something with my life to make sure that somebody else hears that same message and someone else can live that life that I'm living. That's why we're all here. So in this next minute, the band's going to come and lead us through a few songs. But what I need you to do is just stay where you are. You can stand up and, and sing and worship. But this is a time where if you feel the Spirit tugging on your heart, I want you to sing through these songs. I want you to pray that Jesus might make himself real to you right now. So I want to give you a chance in a minute to accept him in your life. You're ready. If you've already made that choice, 
Spend this time praying for your friends, praying for the people around you. We want more people to be set up to where this eternity is with us and with Jesus and not without and not a life of separation. So why don't you stand up sing these songs and we'll be back here. God, we thank you. We thank you so much that you've seen the predicament we're in, that you've seen the baggage that we've chosen to grab on, that when we're stuck at the gate, the place that you prepared for us, just in front of us, you weren't okay to just let us sit there stuck, but you sent your son Jesus to come to earth, live a perfect life, and die in our place. And God, I pray that right now you fill this room with your spirit, that if there's people in this room that might be ready to take that choice for the first time that you're tugging on their hearts now. Guys, if you haven't made that decision before, and you're ready to do that. You want to declare that Jesus is the Lord of your life. I want you to come down, walk up to the front of the stage here, and just stand right here by me. Just make that choice. We talked about declaring. inspiring message that looks like so much fun so one can only imagine what's gonna happen this coming June at camp so I hope to see you guys all there and I hope to see you guys back next weekend because we will be finishing out our last week of the I am fine series with a panel brought to you by the one and only us here at the youth team and we are going to be answering all of your questions about suicide, depression, and all the other past topics that we've been talking about for the past month in this series. Well, I hope you guys have an amazing week, and I hope to see you guys back next Sunday. Bye!